Hi, what's going on guys? So this is a video of speckled trout fishing from yesterday. I used my water wolf for the first time and uh, I got some, some awesome footage I wanted to share with you guys. I'm going to do a little bit of voiceover. A lot of it's just going to be going through letting you guys see what's happening. The things I find interesting I'm going to, I'm going to speak about. Uh, let's just jump right into it. All right, so right in the beginning of the video, this is one of the first times I threw and the mirror lure was actually wrapped up. It got wrapped up on the water wolf. You'll be able to see the tails. I know you can see like the occasional tails here, but the mirror lure is wrapped up so they don't actually have a chance to strike here. It got wrapped up on the water wolf because I was actually casting the water wolf. Uh, you see some nice shots of them there. But there's a lot of these trout and they're actually following this big water wolf camera. I think uh, at this point they believe they can eat it. You see when it's running, they really, really seem to be interested. And then it stops, and they lose interest. They turn, they go away. Starts moving again. And they'll kind of pursue. Kind of pursues, moving. And now they're in pursuit. You see them? See them here? You can just barely see them. These guys blend in so well with the bottom. Stops moving, they swim away. You can always just sort of very lightly see them in the background um, when that mirror lure is just moving along. So I actually have I have no idea I've had a follow. So that's me reeling in and recasting. That's what you just saw right there. When you see it coming in really fast, I reel in and then I recast, and it's very loud, obnoxious, and spinning. So I get rid of most of that. So this is a retrieve that's actually higher in the water column uh, through the same area, but you'll see the difference in the color. You also see the fish do come up. Um, fish will come up. Oh, there's a strike. Yeah, see how quick that was? So I actually didn't feel that at all. I had no idea that just happened. So, yeah, they have several trout following the lure. They seem really interested in it. So, and if you're wondering what the lure is, it's uh, it's an MR17, it's a mirror lure. And uh, this particular one actually has a black back and a chartreuse belly, right? So you can see the orange eyes on it. The eyes on it really pop uh, in this stained water there. So I'm about to get snagged. We just saw a much larger fish back there on the left. I don't know if you noticed that. but uh... All right, so I'm snagged. I'm going to come and retrieve the snag. While I was retrieving the snag, though, you see this bait fish right here? It has an orange belly. So... There's a mirror lure that's very, very popular called an MR17 and 808. And uh, it's, it's a lure that looks just like this MR17, but it happens to have an orange belly, and it seems to be very, very effective in our area. So uh, over time, there's more footage here that I cut out, but I saw several of those bait fish that are almost identical in size to the MR17, and they all have that very vibrant sort of orange belly that you can see. There's more coming here, more of these orange-bellied bait fish, and there's a nice big mullet cruising along, sucking up the bottom. More bait fish. And I think I'm about to clear the snag right now. I actually had to go get my kayak and come out to clear the snag. I was really afraid I was going to wind up losing the, uh, was going to uh, wind up losing the water wolf, maybe breaking off on this thing. So I made sure I took the kayak out there and got it clear properly. You can see how different the bottom looks too, just just from this height, like how difficult it is to see and how different the, the colors look with the changes in the depth in the water. So if you're up high in the water column looking down, it looks dramatically different than if you're down looking up, um, which is interesting for the color changes and stuff, the way that a lure actually looks or the way it presents to a fish. I think it's interesting anyway. All right, I should be getting this clear. There we go. 
All right, we got it back out. I have no idea. I have no idea that I've that there's a single trout that has followed my lure to this point. That's one of the cool things about this thing. I go home and I'm thinking like, man, that was a lame day, and there's just fish everywhere. Look at this. I'm just landing on top of trout. Um, that's another thing. I'm casting this big, heavy water wolf, and it's making a lot of noise when it hits the water. And they seem to completely ignore it. It doesn't bother them at all, at least not on this day. We're going to see a lot of strikes in this run. So this is trolling behind the kayak. Um, and I never, anywhere in this, did I have an idea that I got struck at all. There was the first strike. Oh, see that one didn't like what it saw. There's another. Oh, just the light bumps. And another, here he comes. That's a decent fish. Yeah, so a lot of action there, a lot of action. We're gonna see a big fish swim by here in a couple seconds too. There it goes. See, that was a nice one. Didn't even didn't even take a second glance at the bait. So, <clears throat> we run through quite a bit of area here that doesn't have anything in it, uh, which is kind of shocking to me because it seems like everywhere else there's fish, and then just suddenly it's desolate. So it just shows you the zones, how quickly the zone can change from somewhere the trout want to be to somewhere they don't want to be. You also see the water's a bit cloudier here. A bit high in the water column now. There's another cast. And we are right on top of the trout. There's a nicer fish. Oh, something just swung at it. Oh, look at him. Pow! And I got nailed. Pow! Nailed. I felt that one clearly. Or no, that's where my rod jerked. So I did have one point where my rod jerked really, really hard. And I did at that point have a clue that I had been hit. Um, so uh, anyways, that was the only time when I was out there that I had any idea that I had been hit. So I got hit, uh, God, I don't even know how many times I got hit actually. Uh, to count up until now, I think I've been struck about seven or eight times, only one of which was I even remotely aware of. So. You can see the the ghost shapes of trout coming past. And there's another cast. See those black square tails. Oh, okay, so now that that right there was really something that's worth mentioning a lot. Um, I'm actually going to extend that out. I want you to go back and watch that again. If you're a trout fisherman, this is something that you'll hear people talk about often. A trout actually striking something um, without opening its mouth. It's a, it's a pretty special thing to actually see it. I've heard a lot of people talk about it, but I, I never thought I would actually see it on camera. This fish swims right up to it, lays its face against the lure, and never opens its mouth. All right. So now the video we're getting into now, actually, there's no lure behind the uh, behind the water wolf. I just threw the water wolf out there um, just to see what I could see. You see trout and mullet there, kind of mixed together. Uh, that was mullet. This is trout, um, right on each other. So these these trout are about the same size as those big hardhead mullet. They're not very big trout, 14 to 16 inches. Most of them that I'm seeing here, um, just kind of. Cruising around together, and the trout seem to follow the water wolf, even though 
It's way too big for them to eat. I believe they're following it, trying to figure out if it's something that they can eat. Um, I'm moving it a bit too fast, and it's kind of keeping it up in the water column. So I should slow down here in a second, and we'll see. You'll start to see just how many trout uh, there really are back there. Uh, really just seems like there is uh, trout. Uh, there's a very large area out there that's just solid trout, it seems like. This particular clip, actually, there's a trout that definitely seems like it was coming up thinking about trying to eat the water wolf. There's, yeah, it's right here somewhere. Oh, there he is. That was the one. You saw that charge. He was definitely charging right at the water wolf and got close. Changed his mind at the last second. So, um, and you know, if you've got a lure out there, uh, if you've got a lure out there and it's uh, and it's moving, it's twitching around, it's jigging, or even if it's just dragging through the water, apparently, it is catching these fish's attention. And uh, they are following it. Um, and maybe they need a little bit of scent or they need just the right movement or they need a different color to commit and eat it. Uh, but you see how aggressive these fish are. You see how easy it is to get their attention, how far away they can see it from. Uh, so they are seeing your lure if they are there. Um, it is worth switching it up sometimes. That's what they say. These, these fish are not alone. So interestingly enough, this last little stretch here is completely devoid of life. It's another one of these dead spots. But uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, like, subscribe, and I'll be making some more. Later. That's a nice one. All right. Mm. Trying to get her by the tail so we can let her go the right way. There we go. Mm. Whenever you're ready. That's a heavy fish. She's fat. Whew. Woo!